Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to buy units, deploy units, upgrade them, downgrade them and everything that is related to the store and the game. So let's get started. Let's create a new campaign. Uh, Western 42 Africa Corps, perfect. Okay, so to start things, let's open the store panel. So as you can see, you got uh, a bunch of things on the screen. So uh, let's talk about the categories. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So you got like all the different unit types, right? Order it by types. <laughs> um, otherwise, you have this drop down here that is, in my opinion, really interesting because in the game, you can buy units from your, so you can produce units as a country or you can buy units from another country. So you cannot buy infantry but you can buy equipment, so like uh, Italian tanks, right? Who doesn't want to buy, import Italian tanks? Or planes, or bombers, or ships, anything you like, basically. So, so we're playing Germany. Okay, so let's go straight to the things. So you want to buy light infantry. So click on the price tag, the unit will be added to the basket, just click buy all and done. The store panel closes and uh, this opens your uh, reserve. And you got, uh, well, we only have one unit, but if you had many more, they would all appear here. I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, so you can just click on it and then just deploy it where the uh, tile with the arrow uh, appeared. So to cancel, to cancel it, you can just right click. So right click and the things, uh, uh, the thing go, goes away. So again, right, uh, left click, you see like it's not showing up uh, anywhere else on the map because I cannot spawn anything anywhere else on the map. So left click and then I just can click on any tile I would like and it gets uh, placed. The um, reserve uh, closes automatically because it knows that there is no more units. So no point in keeping it open and done. So you, your units cannot attack or fight, well, cannot fight or move during the turn that you placed it. All right, so I'm going to show you that you can also buy uh, an Italian tank. So let's get a Caro Veloce. And here you go. Oh, I got an achievement. Parasite. Nice. And here we go. It's mine. Awesome. So uh, let me go over the UI elements. Uh, because uh, and uh, yeah, because there are quite a few actually. So um, for infantry, artillery, uh, basically any kind of gun that you can uh, pull or yeah pull, and the infantry you can uh, basically change the transport mode. So you can have uh, half tracks, trucks, uh, and horses for the guns. Yep, for all guns. And um, yeah, so you can just click on it. It will change the price because, well, it comes at a price. So it's quite expensive, uh, especially half tracks. And if you look uh, on here, you're also going to notice that it changes the stats of, unit, of the units. So having a half track uh, increases our defense by five, reduces our uh, fuel amount by quite a lot but also increases our sub damage and our movement speed by three. So it's quite good, but it also doubles the cost, but it's okay. We can just buy it. We can afford it, right? We got almost 4,000. So same thing with uh, guns. We can just select your option and obviously they are exclusive. You cannot have uh, a truck and a half track, right? It's, uh, it's impossible. Um, you also have a little star here. It says that it's a veteran unit. So having a unit as a veteran, well, you just do it and you see it changed the health point. So they have 130 health points. So what's the difference? Well, I'm going to show you right now. So let's deploy it. Let's right click on it. And you see that the unit has 60 experience points and uh, is rank four. So 
what is the difference? Well, this one is rank one, has no experience. So those guys are battle hardened uh, guys, right? They, they're tough. So veterans will never retreat. That is, that is, I think, quite good. And they also have more health points, basically. And a little reminder, when you get to rank five, you also get a hero uh, for the units, which gives uh, random bonuses to the unit. So uh, veteran units are way closer to get a hero. So that was all about the veteran units. Um, so the trucks will give more movement. Uh, one second, let's take the infantry back. Okay, so uh, base movement point value is three. So if we attach a truck, it's seven, and a half truck is going to be six. So the trucks are faster, and you also got more fuel. So you're going to need to uh, resupply the unit less. But you don't have the protection and the little bonus damage. Uh, from the you know the machine guns mounted on the half tracks so you also have a mountaineer option I'm not sure yeah no it's not available for guns but it is available for all infantry so what does this do well mountaineer option will make your uh, unit available to cross mountain ranges well there is <laughs> I can quit I can quit uh, mountain ranges so what are mountain ranges? Uh, yeah. No, sorry, I thought the US were starting on that one. Uh, ah. uh, where could I fa find uh, mountain ranges? Well, you see the, the, the white things here? So the Alps and, well, basically all the I'd like to show you, I just don't remember in what scenario we got mountain ranges. Well, basically not here. Well, here, but like the Soviets are playing first. Oh my god, I'm spending way too much time on that. Okay, anyway, the mountaineer option makes you uh, cap capable of uh, crossing mountains. And this is quite useful because, well, to cross the Alps, for example, uh, you will need this uh, this option, but that is not the only thing it does. It also gives a plus five uh, combat modifier to uh, the unit when you are fighting in rough terrain, uh, like hills. <clears throat> um, yeah. So next one we have winter trained. So the winter train. I don't know why I I, I started this scenario because there is no snow. I guess it should be better to show you an example. So, uh, if you go to the settings and you check your winter damage, if this is more than zero, so I currently have it on three, uh, when you are walking, yep, spring awakening, perfect. So, when there's going to be tiles that are going to be of, uh, like the season is going to be winter, whenever you're going to move, you are going to take casualties, basically. And this is an IS, uh, it's a ASU 152. This is bad. We're going to attack it. Yeah, that was bad. Okay, so you're taking uh, casualties. Why? Well, this is to simulate the loss uh, due to the weather and, you know, like the snow, the cold, and everything. So it doesn't mean like your guys are dying. It just means that your equipment is getting damaged because of the cold and the bad weather. So, well, as you saw, this is uh, something you can change and tweak in the settings. So if you don't want to play with it, just put it on zero. But if you want to play with it, uh, play with it. And so what does this winter train uh, does? It, it will basically make so that the unit will not lose any health point when uh, crossing winter tiles. So you are going to be immune to the the, the, the the losses you should be normally taking when moving into uh, winter tiles. Okay, um, so I explained all of that. I explain all of that. Yep, same. Yep, same thing for those. Um, so you got this little eye here. It means well, basically you got the tooltips, right? So this means that it's a recon unit. 
So recon, they can move twice and they also have a, a visibility of two, but this you can check it here. Visibility in the hexes, two. And I'm uh, pretty sure we got some recon. Uh, nope, not here. Not here either. Oh, probably in the south. Yeah, here. This is a recon. So you move it once and you can move it another time. Um, so all units that have this little eye can move twice and usually they also can see at uh, two axes. Okay, so now for the planes, I'm pretty sure, uh, yeah, that's everything. Um, that's the, the only thing uh, we need to talk about uh, for the options. So for planes, you have uh, the veterancy again. Uh, pretty sure all units have it, well, except mines and except like buildings like radars, but it makes sense. Uh, so you got bombs for planes. So again, just select your plane and add to it a bomb and watch the stat change. So you see that when you equip bombs to your plane, you're less uh, fast, so you lose one movement point. Uh, you also lose a quite a bit of uh, fuel, so you can go less far. And, but, 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 you gain one ammo and uh, some damage. So if you take another plane, that can be equipped with a drop tank. So do the same thing. And the drop tank will allow you to fly, uh, it says, well, 30 tiles further. But you will also lose one movement speed. Movement point, sorry. Okay. Uh, this is, well, basically I got the tooltips, right? I got the tooltips on, so <laughs> it's all explained. I don't even need to speak. Uh, this is uh, a little um, anchor. It means that this is a uh, carrier-borne fighter. So pretty sure you can deploy those uh, at normal air, yeah, airfields. But if you had, let's go into the uh, US uh, Pacific campaign. Let's buy, let's get ourselves a, uh, what do we want to get? A buffalo, let's get a buffalo. So we can see that we can deploy uh, this, well, those are reinforcement tiles, so you can deploy anything you'd like, but let's take this uh, carrier here. Let's move it there and you see we can deploy it. Oh, uh, I think I'm gonna make the tiles go over over the units because otherwise you don't really see it. So you can deploy them on the carriers. So and you can also uh, so you see it's, uh, it's written here so they will also be able to resupply them yep resupply them around or on aircraft carriers. Um, okay um, bum, 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 bum. oh good so well, now that we are here. Uh, oh, well, another one. Uh, seaplanes. So seaplanes can be launched from basically any ship that... I'm pretty sure they have... Uh, yep, they have it. So you see here, is seaplane can launch seaplane. So this battleship can launch seaplanes. And so the battleship Colorado can also launch seaplanes. So if we buy another buffalo... Okay, well, let's buy, let's buy a Devastator, and uh, I'm pretty sure we bought one, but let's buy another one. Okay, so uh, we cannot deploy our Devastator because this is a carrier-based, but we can buy this Corsair here because it is a catapult plane, right? So you can just place it. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool, right? You can deploy units on ships. Um, also, we got torpedoes. So torpedoes, uh, pretty sure it's not going to change the stats. Well, it's not going to change the damage, but torpedoes uh, basically give a bonus to the units uh, against ships. So it's like uh, plus 25 damage or something. Don't remember, but basically, if you equip it with torpedoes, uh, it's going to be more effective uh, against ships. Rockets, rockets, well, just try it. Just play with it. It is more efficient uh, against um, armored units. 
it's not that heavy so it doesn't reduce your speed and it increases your ammo so uh, rockets bombs torpedoes drop tanks uh, veteran C I think we got it we got everything covered except one last thing that I would like to show you uh, don't think okay let's go in a quick game because we're not gonna have find that one uh, End of the war, end of the war, where is it? End of the war? Someone? Where is. Oh, end of the. Oh my god. End of the war, USA. Uh, I'm, I hope. <laughs> Don't think we're gonna have it here. Oh, we have it. B29 Super Fortress. So this is. It looks like a bomb, but this is an atom bomb. So it doesn't change the stats because. Uh, oh, we could buy one. I kind of want to show you how to use an atom bomb. Well, basically it's going to make damage to all six tiles where the thing is dropped. So if you drop it on this airfield, all units around the airfield and on the airfield are going to take like 100 damage. So you cannot miss it, Like right? If, if, if a unit has an atom bomb, you just cannot miss it. And it costs 5,000 because it is kind of OP. So you see it like plus 5,000. And it will also cost 5,000 to rearm. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, anything else about the store? Don't think so. Well, about like the UI at least. So I'm going to go over how to upgrade, downgrade, uh, and the deployment of units because there are special rules rules so for example um, okay I'm gonna go about I'm gonna talk about upgrading so upgrading a unit so to, to upgrade a unit uh, you select it on the board so you, you want to upgrade this guy so you just select it and then uh, you need to go to the same category of the units that you selected on the board. So infantry can be upgraded to infantry or downgraded to infantry. Tanks can be upgraded into different tanks model, tank models or downgraded to any tank models. So we got an M4A3 and let's say we want to turn it into uh, this one. We select it and we just hit upgrade. And then it's going to say that we need to be on a city tile, city tile because you cannot upgrade units just like out in the wild. You need to be in a city to perform the changes. Uh, pretty sure this is not going to be enough to be in a village. Yeah, this needs to be on a factory or a big city tile to be upgraded. Uh, so if we had Brussels, well, we don't, we don't have any armored units, but... Uh, okay, so let's take that one. So this is a, well, it's artillery but we're going to be able to upgrade it. So we go to the artillery section. Uh, we take the T-34 Calliope. We click on it, upgrade. Ah, uh, yeah, right, 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 right. Because if you place your mouse over it, it says deployed around factories or big cities only. So anytime you place your mouse over uh, the graphics of the unit, it's going to tell you where you can deploy the unit. So if I buy one and I hit, I click on it to deploy it, well, you see, we can deploy it only around, the f this is a factory, this is a factory, or uh, a big city. So Paris, for example, is big enough to deploy uh, Calliope. Uh, but we would need a factory. Uh, so we're looking for this arranged thing. So we can deploy it here. Okay, uh, pretty sure infantry can be upgraded anywhere. So we got a shitty town here. Sorry for people living in Breda. Uh, militia upgrade. All right, right. So you cannot upgrade even on those 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 small tiles. So it has to be a medium one. Upgrade. Yep, and done. You got light infantry, and you got light infantry. You want to turn into militia, militia, and done. You got militia. So the price, the price of the upgrade is basically um, 
the price of the new unit minus the price of the unit you want to turn it into. So this is quite simple because if you have some line infantry, so we are at 4,396. If we want to upgrade it, downgrade it to militia, is uh, well, actually, we're going to gain 40. If we wanted to upgrade it to 80 infantry, it's going to cost us 159 minus 100, so 59. And it costs us 59. All right, so yeah, basically, the only tricky feature uh, that is going to cause you issues if you're starting with Hex of Steel. It is that you cannot deploy any unit anywhere. You see, I selected it. I can only deploy it around a factory or a big city, so a capital, usually. <clears throat> Why is this like this? Well, because you should not be able to... Because this is like producing stuff, right? Uh, I don't think like a city with like 20,000 inhabitants can produce an M M8 Greyhound, right? Um... Well, sure, it could be like, yeah, but it's coming from, like, across the map and stuff like that. Well, yeah, but, well, those are reinforcement tiles, right? So, this is producing new stuff. So, you need to, well, have places where to produce it. So, that's why you cannot deploy uh, anything anywhere. But, anyway, the tooltips are always active, so you will always know. So, you see, deploy anywhere. So, anywhere, it says anywhere, so anywhere, right? This is militia, so it also takes into account like the very small cities, because this is militia, right? They have like pretty shitty stats, and they also cost don't cost much. I really want to talk about engineers now, so pretty sure we got engineers, infantry. Yeah, we got a ton of engineers. Yeah, so let's take those engineers. Perfect. So engineers have special abilities; they can uh, build stuff. So, what can they build? Well, they can lay mines, build radars, bunkers, supply depots, uh, and that's it. That's it. So, bunker, radar, landmine, supply depot, and let's buy everything. Okay. So, if I click on the landmines, you see that where the tiles are highlighted, it's only around engineers. Because engineers are able to lay down mines. See? Like this. And you're gonna nice, have a nice sound effect. Um, so you can build all sort of buildings in the game with engineers. So um, I'm sorry, I don't know if you can hear the dog barking. Uh, stupid dog. Uh, I don't know why it's, why it is barking. Well, let me close my door. Okay. Um, so back to the engineers. Uh, the only thing about engineers and building is that you cannot build if you are, if you are, if you are, so let's take it there, if you are in contact with the enemy. Even if this is Volkstorm, you will not be able to deploy anything because you are in the, uh, like, in contact with the enemy. So this is just to prevent, uh, like, like, sp spawning stuff, like, under the enemy's nose. Um sort of things um, okay and yeah I'm pretty sure I talked about everything I talked about the upgrade oh I didn't talk about the coordinates one sec oh, let's start a campaign because this is not a campaign uh, so oops so let's say you want a coordinates you take your unit you want to have as a core unit, you select it, and you see when you're in campaign, uh, you have this set core unit button that will um, show up when you click on a unit. So you select the unit in the store that you want to have, you want to buy, so then you hit set core unit. This unit is now a core unit, it will cost, more, one, it will cost 100 more money, so you just add it to the basket, buy it, now it is yellow by default, Place it, it is yellow, and in your order of battle, if you go to the tank category, it's going to be uh, the first one on top. So that is how you recognize your core units. They are always yellow. So yellow here, yellow here, and uh, yellow in your deploy uh, deploy thing. 
Um, so that is, yeah, how... You can also take this infantry, go here, select it, set core units, upgrade, and you upgraded your units as a core unit. Uh, pretty sure I talked about everything. Well, paratroopers, paratroopers. Paratroopers uh, are airborne when you buy them, so you can deploy them only around airfields. And here you go. And yep, and yeah, you see, like we got two core units because we got one, two. Um, I think I talked about everything really. Just double checking that I didn't forget anything. Yeah, I talked about everything. So I call ships can be deployed in any harbor. Well, not those harbors. Only like those harbors, like the big ones. And we got one. Yeah, we got one. Emden. So yeah, we got one. So we can deploy ships there. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap this up because uh, I really think I talked about everything. I did. I quickly went over the reinforcement tiles. Basically, the reinforcement tiles can deploy anything, planes, and and ground units. Uh, this is because they represent like stuff coming from outside the map. So if you place your mouse over it, it says reinforcement tile here in the top left here, reinforcement tiles. So if I buy a plane, if I buy a ship, if I buy infantry, well, I'm going to show you with like heavy tank, let's say Panzer III. You can buy, uh, you can deploy any type of unit on those tiles and any kind of plane and any Oh, well, this is an Italian. Sorry, this is Italian. Yeah, so if I buy it as uh, the Italians, I'll be able to deploy my stuff around the reinforcement tile. And here we go. So, yeah, that's uh, really everything there is to know about the store, how to upgrade units, uh, deploy units. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to do well because, like, you got told tips everywhere. So when you don't know where you can deploy what, it's going to say, the game is going to tell you, like, deploy it around factories or big cities only, uh, deploy around airfields, deploy around our harbors only, uh, deploy around destroyers only. So yeah, I didn't talk about the naval mines. Uh, I Did I buy it? Yeah, I, buy it. I just bought a uh, destroyer. So naval mines are placed by destroyers. Uh, thing is, I already, uh, well, I just placed that one, so we cannot place the unit and place mines around place mount mines around it sorry but uh yeah this destroy here if we take it a uh, like here for example we will be able to place naval mines basically um they are like the engineers of the sea <laughs> kind of um yeah i'm pretty sure that's it pretty sure that's it pretty sure that's it Oh, well, no, oops, sorry, didn't talk about the coastal batteries. Coastal batteries can be placed around, yikes, can be placed around harbors only. I'm going to show you that in a sec. So, coastal battery, and, well, let's buy it. Ew, we're not going to have enough. So, coastal batteries, you can place them only around harbors. And uh, the sad thing is, we are not going to be able to place a an armor train. Uh, okay, we're going to solve. Uh, where would we have enough money and railroads? Mm. Okay, let's go big. Let's go Eastern Front 41. Pretty sure we have more than enough money there to buy an armor train on turn one. So armor train can obviously be placed only on railroads. So artillery, armor train, buy, deploy, and you can see that you can only deploy them uh, on railroad. And done. And they obviously also can move only on railroad. So this is the Eastern Front 41 map. So if you want to play on it, please feel free. It is a tough one, but it is a fun one. So, 
I think that's all for me uh, for this episode. So I hope that you learned uh, things. If you have any questions, please drop them below in the comments. I will read them all and answer to everything. So thank you for your time and uh, see you in the next one.